Hey folks, Sino here. I've been diving into Texas Chainsaw Massacre this last week, and I feel like the learning curve for new victim players is a little higher than learning how to play family. As an asymmetrical game veteran myself, I wanted to help all of you out with 5 tips on understanding how to play victim more effectively, understand the game mechanics a little better, and escape more in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Alright, let's get to it. Tip number 1. Understanding the skill tree and attributes. Okay, my first tip is for before you even get into a match at all, and for some of you this may be pretty basic, but I think it's important to ensure everyone is spending their points in the skill tree and their attribute points. Let me give you a quick rundown on how the skill tree works. You spend points you get on leveling up to make perks usable on your chosen victim. Each perk has three levels, uh, these levels don't carry over to other victims by the way. And you can level up these perks if you have them equipped when you play as that victim. To equip a perk you've unlocked, you go to your loadouts and then you use the three slots next to the victim's portrait. You've probably noticed the skill tree, but there are two other components to a victim build that are easy to overlook. The first is attribute points. You see those little star icons between the perks as you level up in the skill tree? Those are attribute points which function like your character's base stats. These attribute points are why it's easier to search for items without making noise due to Connie's high base stealth stat or why Anna can take more hits from family members due to her high base toughness attribute. On the loadout screen, you can spend extra attribute points how you see fit to increase a character's attributes. This has a surprisingly large effect on gameplay. You'll definitely notice if a character can run for longer with more endurance or search for items quicker with more proficiency. Experiment a little and see what build takes your fancy, or you could just wait for someone to make a build guide in the future and copy them. Nudge nudge wink wink if you know what I mean. There's also your star sign ability, or at least I think this is what it's called. They had a live stream before the game went live where they called it something like a zodiac ability or something like that. But basically, this is your character's signature ability, and as you level up that victim, you can gain three modifiers to this to make it stronger. Make sure you don't forget to do this if you have played on one victim for a little while. It's easy to overlook. You can respec at any time and spend your points on whatever family or victim character you want to. Tip number two, manage your stamina. Alright, now that we have all the nerdy stuff out of the way, let's get into some gameplay tips here. This is probably the biggest mistake I see newer players make as victim. If you're finding that family members kill you really quickly every time once they find you, it's probably because you had no stamina. You cannot outrun family members effectively without stamina. So try not to use your full speed sprint around the map unless you know it's safe. For you DVD players out there, this is probably the biggest core gameplay difference as in that game you can run at full speed indefinitely. TCM is designed so that the best way to win a chase is to use moments during the chase to regenerate your stamina until you have a good opportunity to run out of a family member's line of sight and then you hide or escape. If you know that someone chasing you has to spend some time before they catch up to you, for example a family member that cannot follow you through a crawl space, you might want to take a second to stay put and have your stamina replenished before continuing to run somewhere else. Get used to keeping an eye on your stamina gauge and use crawl spaces or gaps to buy yourself time to get your stamina back so that you can properly escape. Tip number three, don't be afraid to make some noise sometimes. As I'm sure you've noticed, rushing actions eventually causes a red visual noise ping that alerts family members to where you are. Obviously it's good to play stealthy in order to avoid the family, but time is a precious resource. If you know family members are far away from you or distracted with killing your friends, don't be too afraid to rush an action and make some noise. Getting actions done quicker means you can work on escape before the family powers up grandpa. You might also want to deliberately slam doors and make noise to try and lure family towards you and away from a friend who's in trouble or someone who's working on an escape method that you can use later. I find that trying to think from the family's point of view during the game helps me. If the family has no info on where victims are and they see a ping far away, they're much more likely to spend all that time walking away and pathing over to a side of the map away from a potential escape route your friends might be able to open up for you. But be wary of making tons of noise in the basement right at the start of the game. Before Grandpa wakes up, the only family member able to go into the basement is Leatherface, who, as you probably have realised, starts off in there. Victim groups that make too much noise too early wake up grandpa. The message you see on the screen changes actually depending on whether the family or victims have woken up grandpa. You definitely don't want all three family members to come down to the basement without a plan to escape. Trust me on this. I'm not saying making noise early is always a bad idea, but it helps if everybody on the team is on the same page before you commit to doing a rush strat like this. Tip number 4. Bone shards and stunning family members. 
Running and hiding from family members is fun and all, but I know some of you out there have been dying for an ASIM game where you can fight back against your pursuers, and luckily TCM has a few ways to do this. If you have a bone shard in your inventory, you can stun a family member for quite a long time. Approaching a family member from behind with a bone shard in your inventory will give you a prompt allowing you to do a sneak attack to stun the family member outright and buy everyone some time. I've sprinted up behind family members chasing a friend to stab them in the back and it's worked beautifully, so give it a try next time you get a bone shard in one of your games. This is the best method as it's quick and it works on all of the family members. Again, with a bone shard, if you approach from the front of the family member instead, you can enter what's called a close encounter where you have to mash a button to win a head-on struggle. This is heavily weighted on the victim side as you have to mash less than the family member to win the close encounter and get that stun. But be very careful of this. If you lose, you are killed instantly. And if you enter a close encounter with one family member and another is nearby, they'll probably kill you during the struggle anyway. Bear in mind you cannot do head-on close encounters with Leatherface. I guess the victims can't parry a chainsaw like Leon from Resident Evil 4 yet? Personally, I would only really recommend doing this as a last resort if possible because it can get you killed quite easily. Both of these interactions are affected by the victim's strength attribute, so plan your build accordingly if you want to get up close and personal with the family a lot. You can also stun the family by slamming a door in their face. This is hilarious and will knock them down on the floor for quite a long time, but the movement can be a little janky. I think I need some more practice on how to use this personally, but I've seen people able to do this on streams repeatedly as soon as the family member gets up every time, so just keep this one in mind because I think it could be quite strong in the long run. And lastly, tip number five, take note of the family composition. TCM shows you both the family members you are playing against and whether they are a three-man group, two-man or all solo players. Take note of this at the start of the round and it can help you out quite a lot actually. For example, if you're playing against a hitchhiker, you should expect to find traps in locations you want to go like objectives or occasionally in bushes where you can't see down at your feet very easily. Look down! To counter this, you might want to hold on to bone shards longer as these are able to disable traps. Cook players can add a second lock to doors and gates which makes them harder to open up for you and they can also use a listening ability to pinpoint your location. You might want to have someone carry more unlock tools if you know that a cook is in your game. Additionally, Sissy and the Hitchhiker are more slippery and can pop up sometimes when you don't expect it. Being stealthy is part of their whole kind of character identity so be wary of this. Family members playing together are much more likely to work together and communicate with each other so be wary of that when you're being chased. If you're against a family 3 stack though, then you probably want to get comfy in that gamer chair and prepare for a challenge because the three of them are likely to be communicating with each other at all times. Hopefully these tips helped you learn something new or maybe think about some strategy for your victim games next time you play Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I am loving this game a lot and I plan to make loads of TCM gameplay and guide content in the future. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscribe button and leaving a like and I will see you in the next one. This has been Sinnoh and thank you for watching.